Hi, this is Ben Schwellen, and today I'm talking about the Romance languages, letting you know what's unique about each of them so you can make a decision about which one is the right one to learn for you. And if you're new here, hey, hit that subscribe button so I can enrich your life with culture and stuff. The reason why I made this video is because I made this video before for you about the Celtic languages and I got this comment below by Solachings. I think I pronounced his name right. He said, I gotta say that I like how you analyze each language based on their individual qualities instead of what's useful or what is convenient to learn. Much respect. Gorav Mathagat Agaslanwayat that last bit's Irish. And I'm really thankful for that because my point of the video was to go into that. And that's what this video is about. This is about what's going to enrich you as a human being by choosing which language to learn. What I got from his comment was this. If you are learning a language for what is useful or economical, you already know which language to learn because if you're learning it for economic reasons and business, your clients or customers, are already obvious to you. If you're learning it for family reasons, you know which languages those people speak. So you've already answered that question. However, if you want to learn a language for cultural reasons, you need insight into the culture and also insight into the qualities that are specifically belonging to each of those languages in order to make an educated decision. And that's where I come in. One decision I had to make in making this video for you was which languages to include. There are over 40 Romance languages. So the smaller ones, and I'll begin listing them every few seconds here. Those smaller ones, I could not include because in order for you to gain access to them, in these cases, you're going to need access into other Romance languages like Gallo in northwestern France, you're going to need French to get into it. So these languages are the ones which you can learn through English, or German, or Arabic, or whatever, just not a Romance language, that there will be enough resources and enough speakers for you to have access into that language without knowing any Romance languages prior. So when you're choosing a language to learn, you need to be aware of what access points into other languages it gives you and what cultural gateways it opens up. So for instance, English, it's going to give you a lot of science and financial gateways. And my Welsh that I learned, it gives you an incredible gateway into literature and music. And each language has different gateways and gateways into other languages from it and resources. And that's important for you to know going forward. Portuguese is an incredibly unique language. It formed as the westernmost Latin language to form at the very edge of the Roman Empire and the known world. And it's markedly different from other Latin languages because of the rich amount of nasal and vowel sounds that it has. French also has a lot of these characteristics for very similar reasons. They both, Portuguese and French, have a high amount of phonemes or sounds possible in the language. There are 37 sounds in standard Portuguese. Of course, there are variations of Portuguese across the world and this makes it a very rich language. But if you're going to learn Portuguese, what will enrich you personally from it? Well, if you're a person who likes the sea, the mercantile era of history or trade, seafaring, Brazilian culture, the greater Amazon basin, the largest country in South America, even parts of Southern Africa, the Portuguese language has a lot to offer in terms of all those things and subjects within these things which will enrich your life. It's given us a vast amount of vocabulary to do with oceanic things and especially early fruits 
that came into the European world before Spain had gone to the Americas. Portugal was expanding down the African coast and had found a sea route to India before anybody else. And it brought back words like banana from an African language which passed into English. Coconut, the word cashew, comes from Portuguese, the nut. And even things like types of boats. A caravel is a type of early exploratory navigational boat that would cross the ocean. And also you get words like piranha, the fish. In Portuguese, it's piranha. Culturally, they were the, the center point of a troubadour culture, a traveling musician poet culture, which was in vogue across the Iberian Peninsula and inspired people in France, which eventually gave birth possibly to poetry even in Wales. So the expansive culture of the Portuguese language lyrically and poetically is something that would deeply enrich anyone for learning this language. Its syntax and grammar are very similar to Spanish, but there are some marked differences. I'm not here to explain grammar in detail, but you get loss of consonants and more pronunciation of vowels and softer, mushy sounds than you would get in Spanish. Because there's less of an Arabic influence in Portuguese than there is Spanish, whilst they were both influenced by it, and Portuguese was influenced more, much more so, by a pre-Roman Celtic culture, the Lusitanians, and even possibly pre-Celtic. And the accent of Portuguese people, where they place the emphasis on their words and how they shape their words, is markedly different from Spanish because of this pre-Roman influence, which isn't quite so pronounced in Spanish at all. So there are many things in Portuguese that will enrich your life. As for gateways and being a gateway into other languages, as I mentioned before, Portuguese isn't so much a gateway into other languages as some of the other ones in this video. But what it does give you is a lot of insight into native South American cultures. And if you do learn Portuguese, then Spanish is going to be very easy by extension. It will give you some insight into Arabic, but not that much. And the nasal sounds in Portuguese are very similar to what you actually find in Irish and Welsh. And most peculiar is that you get to Aragonese, a very small spoken language in the northwest of Spain. And Portuguese is very close to this language in terms of how it constructs things. It's also close to Osatan, which influenced its orthography, gave it the idea, the letter that it has. And Portuguese is really a world unto itself in terms of gateways, because the gateways to other languages lead inward in Portuguese, more towards the languages that formed Portuguese. Yes, Latin, but the pre-Roman languages that were there before it, which are quite distinct. We don't know much about them, but Portuguese and what it became out of Lower Latin is really what's left of that culture. And because of that, Portuguese has this distinctive, well, Portuguese accent. It also gives you a connection across the border into Galicia, which was the same language as Portuguese at one time. Spanish is a gateway language to so many different languages and cultures because of the history of the Spanish Empire. Spanish allows you to get into the Basque culture, which is here along the Spanish-French border along the Pyrenees Mountains. This is a language isolate. Spanish is valuable because it is the gateway to the Basque culture. Another gateway that the Spanish language offers is Arabic, funny enough. The Arabic language has left thousands of words in Spanish. Words in English like algebra and almond come through Spanish from Arabic in many cases. And then you get words like guitar, guitarra in Spanish, which come through Arabic. And the musical legacy that the Arab caliphs left in Spanish culture is very deep and frankly Spanish is worth learning just for that flamenco and Arabic influence upon its music that has made it so vibrant over the centuries. In 
the Americas, you can learn Mayan, Quechua, the Aztec languages, the Arawak languages, all these native languages across the Andes and up through Mexico via Spanish. You have a gateway into the earliest documentation that Europeans have of writing down the legends of pre-Columbian America. And it's through Spanish that you will find this rich history. Part of why Spanish was able to assimilate so many of those people is because Spanish is so easy to learn. There's so few sounds. In Castellano Spanish, the standardized version, there are only 25 sounds. So once you know the sounds, it's not really confusing. And there's a stark differentiation between the vowels in Spanish and the consonants. The consonants are very hard for the most part. There are exceptions. And the vowels are very pronounced. So it's a clear to the ear language. And the reason why Spanish speakers have such a thick accent when they learn another language is because their ears can't actually differentiate between some types of sounds when they're learning another language because their native tongue doesn't have many sounds. For instance, my language, Welsh, has 45 sounds, which is part of why Welsh speakers are good at learning other languages. But back to Spanish, comparing it with English, standard Queen's English has 36 sounds. So 11 more than Spanish. For you as an English speaker to get into Spanish from the ear will be very easy. It has a deep and long tradition, also influenced by Germanic languages, which gives you a bit of that. It is a world language fused with the words from other languages, although they are simplified in Spanish because of the sheer scarcity of sounds within the Spanish language. For anyone who's a bit hesitant of learning another language because of the difficulty, Spanish is probably the best Latin-based language for you because it is really, really simple. Catalan is richer, much richer than it would first appear, even though it only has as its own state the Principality of Andorra and the autonomous regions within Spain of Catalonia and Valencia and some bits of the border in France. It has an extensive history in the Mediterranean. Catalan is rich because it became the Mediterranean language absorbing Sardinian, Siciliano, even parts of Greece, elements of French and Spanish, influence from the north coast of Africa in many cases, Malta. And these fused into or were absorbed by the Catalan language. So if you were into Mediterranean culture, I would say that Catalan is the Mediterranean language. It has more elements of more countries of the Mediterranean than any other language in the Mediterranean. And that makes it very special. There are enclaves in Sardinia which speak it today. The Kingdom of Aragon it comes from once ruled over basically the entire western Mediterranean. They wrote down in this golden age, in I think it was the 13th century, 14th century, a lot of their own literature. If you're interested in trade, the history of trade within Europe, they were a center focal point of that and they were contributors, major contributors during the Renaissance. There's a lot of architecture. If you're interested in architecture, Barcelona is without its second in the world for that. It is a beautiful country, Catalonia, and I would highly suggest it. Its strength is that it is a bridge, going back to that gateway, between all the, well, all the Western Romance languages. If you learn Catalan, you have a foot into Spanish, French, Italian, Sardinian. So Catalan is much richer than would first appear. It's deceptively rich. Its influences are starkly less Arabic than Spanish and less oil-based than French. But it is very close to Lusitan in the south of France. And these connections, are something that 
can give you a lot of insight. And I think this is something truly valuable. Catalan also has more sounds than its neighbor Spanish. It has 36 phonemes or sounds, which is the same amount that English has. Now, these are not the same sounds, but they have the same amount of sounds. So for an English speaker, it would be mainly similar in the diversity of various sounds. French is the language of the Latin world that I chose to learn. French, what I like about having learned it is what it does to my English. It allows me, it offers me more utensils to pick apart and dissect English and use it more effectively, to use it with more precision. I know because of French which words come from which branches of different languages in English why words are spelled certain ways in English, but also if you're going to understand the English psyche and why English people are the way they are, you need to learn French because that's really where a lot of the roots of their culture come from, the French language and its influence upon England. So I really value it for that. Maybe it's a bit snobby that I like French to know more about my own mother tongue, but I like it. The most difficult part of learning French is going to be the fact that it has more sounds than English. It has 39 sounds, and it has a few more vowel sounds than English does. More diphthongs or combinations of vowels. And many, many words are going to just seemingly drop off consonants, and you won't understand why. And it's going to be confusing for a long time. And then you'll just get it. It'll happen, but it's going to take a long time. With French, you have a rich history in terms of literature and writings from the Napoleonic era. You have architecture, French, that gave us most of our terminology for gardening and cooking in English. If you like wine, French is beautiful, and it just goes on and on. But that pinpointedness of pronunciation is going to be very difficult. French is the weird language in terms of the Romance languages. It is the most different. It has a deep underlayer of Celtic, which the other languages don't have. French is a serious gateway into English. It's also, strangely, a gateway into Dutch and even German at times. It's the most influenced Latin language by German. It was influenced by Germanic tribes as it formed. The accent is distinctly different, very different from Spanish, Catalan, and Italian. More closely, actually, to Portuguese in some ways. And it's that gateway into English that I like about French, but I like it. And you should learn a language because you like it. It is an act of love to learn a language. Italian is much simpler a language to learn than Catalan or French. It's only got 30 phonemes or sounds in its standard language, and it is the closest to Latin and it has the least amount of influence from, say, Germanic or Celtic sources. It does have a bit more of Greek influence, but it doesn't quite have that Arabic influence to any same extent that Spanish or Portuguese have, though it does have a bit be a Maltese in a strange way to the south. And this concentration of Latin vocabulary is, a, is its own gateway. Italian is a gateway into the classical world, into that antiquity into the philosophy and the writings of hundreds and thousands of people who wrote in Latin over the centuries. Cicero, Caesar, you have comedies, tragedies, religious writings, everything you can think of was written in Latin. And if you're interested in the Roman Empire, what the Latin language slowly morphed into, how it affected the other Latin languages, then Italian is definitely for you. It is the best one to get a grasp on Latin through. It's also got a culture of its own right, of course. It's famous for its operas, its paintings. If you're into cars, the Italians love that. And in my opinion, French may have the wine, but the Italians definitely have the food. And frankly, one of their finest works is 
this cookbook here. I'll put it here once I find it. And their finest work being a cookbook is particularly unique. And there's a lot of reasons why that book is special for Italians. If you want to learn more about that, I'll put the link down below. It's a deeply important book for the Italian people. Romanian is a truly unique language. It's set apart geographically and it's set apart historically from much of the Latin world. The Romanian language has grammatical elements which are unheard of in languages like French and Spanish. Romanian has what's called a K system. Latin had this. Irish has it. German has it to an extent. Polish has it. I'm not going to go into what it is, but it makes Romanian, for an English speaker, much more complicated and more of an effort to learn than the other Romance languages, which in a way would make it more rewarding. It also does something with its definite articles, the word the, in that, you know the word Dracula, well, Dracul literally means the dragon in Romanian. It's an epithet, a title was given to warriors at one time. Postrami is from the Romanian language. I thought it was Italian, but it's not. Having learned some of the basics of the Romanian language and how it fits things together in a very unique way, which is slightly different to the other Romance languages, I see that it's much more layered in terms of influences and gateways into other cultures than the other Romance languages are. There are a million people within the center of Romania who speak Hungarian. Also, there used to be walled towns, German-speaking towns, and inadvertently, this has influenced the Romanian language in several ways. The food is really unique, influenced by Slavic and Turkic peoples, which have influenced the Romanian language and the Romanian culinary arts, the cuisines of Romania. They also have words from the Turkish language which ruled over them for centuries. You get lots and lots of words from the Slavic languages. It's endured as a deeply Latin-based language, despite the influence of Slavic upon it. Romanian is the ultimate fusion of the Slavic world and the Romance world. Thousands of Slavic loanwords. But this is really what makes it beautiful. It is the only true fusion of the Slavic world and the Roman world. If you want to try and learn a Slavic language one day, but you're not quite ready for it, Romanian is the best shout, I would say, because so many of those sounds are in Romanian, so many of those cultural concepts which give you a context into the Slavic world and view of seeing things are actually in Romanian, even though it's culturally within the Romance sphere. Architecturally, Romania is quite unique. It was deeply influenced by France at one point and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And in the southeast of Romania, you had a lot of the Ottoman Empire's influence. So this is really the only country, Romania, where you have the fusion of the Hungarian cultures, the French cultures, and the Ottoman cultures architecturally in the buildings that you see as you walk down the street. And I find this extraordinarily unique. One thing that I also like about Romanian is the underlayer of words which come from before the Roman Empire. So whilst in Portuguese, Spanish and French, you had elements, residual elements of either Celtic or pre-Indo-European peoples. In Romanian, you have a people called the Dacians. And they may have been broadly Celtic, but they were definitely their own thing. And Romania was really the only place where these people emerged along the Carpathian Mountains. The Romanian language today has stresses, pinpoints of accent that are unlike anything else in the, the Latin world. And I really like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you gained some benefit out of seeing what cultures in these languages have to offer, and we'll see you in the next video.